Firstly, I would like to welcome and to say how a great pleasure we had to welcome NATO's Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen. Uh, I think uh, you know and we spoke about the importance for Luxembourg uh, of being a founding member of uh, NATO and uh, the capacity, even if we have a small army, to participate in, in NATO's missions for many Yes, we are also very proud to host NATO's support and procurement agency in Capellen with over 1,100 uh, people working uh, there uh, for. We had, uh, I have to admit, a very fruitful meeting and uh, honest, where we were able to, to um, ex have a good exchange and also uh, to exchange information about the next summit in Wales, in Newport, um, where there will it take uh, place. We for sure have uh, sp spoken about Ukraine, Ukraine situation. And um, we have uh, one thing in, more than one thing, but one thing in common on that point, what is that Ukrainian has to be able to decide and there is no other who has the right to decide for them. Um, we had, uh, I also explained to the Secretary General that uh, Luxembourg's position is always that uh, was, is and will stay that we don't want confrontation and we still hope that diplomacy and that Geneva will have a good result and that we will be able to have a de-escalation and not, and not uh, escalation and on the other hand it's clear that we cannot accept a violation of international law and uh, that uh, it's why I think also that uh, catalogue that uh, the EU decided uh, to have was the right step not to close uh, every door. So uh, I uh, really want to thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for your uh, visit uh, to, to Luxembourg and uh, being able to have that fruitful meeting and this exchange about actual topics with you. Tak. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Scandinavian. Thank you very much, um, uh, Prime Minister, for those uh, kind words. Uh, it is indeed a great pleasure uh, to be back uh, in, in Luxembourg and, and to meet you. Um, Luxembourg has been a steadfast uh, member of NATO since uh, the start. Um, you contribute to our missions uh, in Kosovo and Afghanistan. You have uh, provided uh, vital funding uh, to the Afghan uh, security forces. Uh, you support uh, our uh, project to develop cutting-edge military capabilities such as uh, surveillance drones uh, and to share vital capabilities uh, such as maritime patrol uh, aircraft. So, Prime Minister, I, I thank you uh, for all uh, Luxembourg uh, has done uh, for NATO. As we prepare uh, for our Wales summit uh, in September, uh, we have to ensure uh, that we continue uh, to invest uh, in our uh, security. Uh, every ally uh, has a part to play uh, in this uh, effort. Um, NATO keeps us all secure, and we must all continue investing uh, to keep NATO strong. We must invest financially in strong and capable forces, and we must invest politically uh, in building strong and effective partnerships uh, around the world. Russia's aggression against Ukraine shows that we cannot simply take our security uh, for granted. I'm deeply concerned uh, by the increasing tension uh, in eastern Ukraine, um, the continuing violence uh, committed by pro-Russian separatists. Uh, I call on Russia to de-escalate uh, de the crisis, pull back its troops from Ukraine's border, and play a constructive role in the search uh, for uh, a solution. NATO's focus is on our fundamental purpose to protect our allies and deter 
against any threat. We have already taken steps to bolster our defenses and we are preparing to take uh, further steps uh, to ensure our security in the air, at sea and on land. These are measures uh, which we can put in place quickly and sustainably. The solidarity of the alliance is unbreakable. Every ally contributes to it. And Prime Minister, I know um, I can count on your support as we prepare for the tasks ahead. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, Jim Newberg, uh, Lindberg, uh, uh, Secretary General, I wonder what do you uh, make the idea of uh, individual allies uh, sending arms and weapons to Ukraine? Do you think that would be a sensible uh, response? And for the Prime Minister, uh, can you give us a sense of Luxembourg's approach to a possible uh, third stage uh, of sanctions, in particular financial sanctions? Where would you stand on that? Um, on uh, military supplies, um, it's a national decision. Um, as you know, uh, military equipment uh, is possessed uh, by individual nations, by individual allies, and not by uh, NATO. So NATO is not engaged um, uh, in that. Um, so. Uh, that's based on bilateral agreements uh, between Ukraine uh, and uh, individual uh, allies. Your question about the third step, uh, I think we are still in the second step for the moment. I have no elements who would uh, tell me that we should directly proceed to the third uh, steps. Um, nothing should be excluded. We should be able to discuss about uh, everything in the third steps, but as I told you, I hope that Geneva will be a success. I don't want now to do speculations about what the sanctions should be next week. I hope that next week we will be able to have this escalation. As Secretary General and myself said, we hope that the third step, we have to prepare it, but we, I hope that we won't need to, uh, to realize it. Um, yeah, as a matter of principle, we never comment on uh, intelligence, um, uh, but I think um, facts uh, on the ground uh, speak uh, for, for themselves. Um, and um, uh, we, we call on Russia to, to distance itself uh, from uh, the violent uh, actions uh, of uh, pro-Russian uh, separatists. Um, Russia hasn't done yet, and that uh, yet. Um, um, it, it would actually uh, contribute to a de-escalation of the situation uh, if Russia uh, would condemn uh, such uh, violent actions and distance itself uh, from those actions. Do you think that the, the measures that are uh, expected to be announced tomorrow, the, the reassurance measures, will that in, include substantial numbers of ground troops being sent to uh, East European countries, uh, do you believe? And um, how, do you think that all countries are going to be involved in these measures? Will they go to amount of rotations uh, that are going to be announced tomorrow? Thanks. I, I, I won't today comment uh, on uh, decisions that might possibly be taken uh, tomorrow. Um, but as you know, uh, when foreign ministers uh, met at the beginning of this month, they tasked our military authorities to uh, present recommendations as to how we could further strengthen uh, our uh, collective uh, defence. Um, we have received uh, such uh, recommendations and I would expect the Council to take uh, decisions. But um, I would also add to this, um, some uh, suggested measures can be implemented uh, immediately 
Others uh, will need further uh, consideration and uh, could uh, be decided on uh, at a later stage, also taking into account uh, the evolving uh, situation.